In this demonstration of the LSS E64 legal calendaring system, we're going to focus on the rules-based uh, calendar entry features. Uh, from the master calendar, we'll go up to the top and click on new entry and the new calendar entry form appears. Now when entering calendar items in LSS E64, there's several different ways you can do this. You can enter a single event date, you can enter a single calculated event date, or a recurring uh, series of events. But for this demonstration, we're going to focus strictly on the rules-based uh, entry options. So we'll start by entering a client and matter number. Now if you don't know a client number or matter number, there's lookup buttons on the right. You can press one of these and type in a few letters of the client's name or the matter description and select it that way. Uh, but we cover that in another video, so we're going to skip that for now. Put in the client and the matter number, and you'll notice that uh, once we do that, the system automatically fills in this jurisdiction field. And that's because I already assigned uh, this matter to a particular jurisdiction or, or rule set. If you want, you can uh, click the lookup button on the right and choose a different jurisdiction, but we're going to leave the uh, default as is. Next, we'll choose a trigger, and for this, I'm going to type in trial and pick this trial trigger, and then finally the trigger date, which would be the trial date. And for this, I'm going to pick December 6, 2011. And finally, a timekeeper. So with that information entered, we can now click Save. And the system is uh, going out to calendarrules.com and getting a list of all the events related to that trial date and the trial trigger. So you can see here uh, that f the first event on August 11th, it's the last day to file and serve notice of motion for summary judgment. And you can scroll down through all of these events that were calculated for you based on that trigger and the trigger date. Once we have this list, you do have the option to uh, deselect or uh, not accept certain events. So, for example, up here we see several entries for last day to file and serve notice, and they're based on different service methods, mail outside state mail, fax overnight hand. Let's say we don't want to see any of these other than the mail delivery method. We can just uncheck those and uh, they will not appear on our calendar. And if you want to make that more of a permanent selection, there's a button or a checkbox right down here that says save these settings as the default for future entries. I'm going to leave the defaults all as they were and accept all of these entries into my calendar. So I'll click save and you see now the system is adding all of those events to my master calendar. And then from this master calendar, you can scroll forward to future months, October, November, December, and all of these are entries that were added as a result of that uh, single rules-based entry that I uh, created just a minute ago. And we see all the way out to the actual day of the trial here. You can also display uh, all of these events in more of a list view and have everything listed that way. We'll go back to the monthly view here. Now it's also worth pointing out that if your firm uses uh, Outlook and Microsoft Exchange, all of these entries that were added to the calendar in LSS E64 are also going to be added to each respective attorney's Outlook calendars. So uh, once these entries are in Outlook, uh, they can then synchronize with your iPhones, Droids, Blackberries, and so forth. So let's go back into a new entry form uh, and we can uh, show you more about how this works. So we put in a client matter number before and it automatically dropped in this jurisdiction. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can get rules for LSS E64. One is you can enter them yourself. You can create your own jurisdictions and your own triggers and rules. Uh, but what we've done here is actually subscribe to rule sets from calendarrules.com. So all of these uh, jurisdictions were provided to us through our subscription with calendarrules.com. 
and I have three jurisdictions here that I've subscribed to, but they have uh, literally hundreds uh, to choose from. So you just let them know which jurisdictions you need. Uh, they'll create an account for you, and these will all these jurisdictions will get downloaded into the LSS E64 system. And then with each jurisdiction comes a set of triggers. So these are all of the triggers that are included in this particular California Superior Court jurisdiction in my subscription. And along with the jurisdictions, those get downloaded as well. So let me show you how uh, this actually gets downloaded once you have your subscription for the jurisdictions and triggers over in the code uh, setup area of the system. There's a link right here that says download calendarrules.com subscriptions. You click on that and the system goes out to their web service and, and imports automatically all of your subscribed jurisdictions and triggers. Now also, this happens automatically each night, so you don't actually have to go and click this link. Every night the system's going to check with the web service and bring in all of the jurisdictions and triggers that you've subscribed to. Now also during that download process overnight the system is going to check to see if any changes have occurred in the rule sets that might apply to any future events that you have scheduled in our calendar system. And if so, we will notify the administrator or whoever's designated to manage these things that there are some events that have been affected and uh, give you the opportunity to reschedule those events based on the rules change. So let's take a look at another entry. Um, this time, I'm going to pick a slightly different trigger. Let's do uh, written discovery served. Now, when we I picked this trigger, uh, the service method field uh, became enabled, which means that in order to calculate the date correctly for you, the system needs to know what service method was used. And I'm going to choose regular mail. We'll leave this date the same. Uh, put in the timekeeper and click save, and the system returns the date of October 12th for the last day to serve responses to written discovery and that's based on that regular mail service method. It would compute potentially a different date if the service method was by fax or by hand and so forth. So one of the great things about using these rule sets from calendarrules.com is that the rules themselves, the definitions, are not stored on your local system. Uh, what, we, what we store on your local system are your jurisdictions, the triggers, the actual calendar events themselves, clients matters, and so on. But the rules and the calculations actually take place at the calendarrules.com web service and are downloaded to this screen that you see here. So when a rule changes, you don't have to worry about whether or not you have the current rules on your system because they're all handled automatically by the service and are um, always you're always using the latest and greatest rules definitions. So this has just been a quick preview of the rule-based uh, entry functions in LSS E64. Uh, if you'd like to see a more in-depth demonstration of the system uh, where you can ask questions um, and, and talk to a real person showing you the system and the features that you're interested in saying, uh, just give us a call. Our number is 800-331-4122 and you can find us on the web at www.lsse64.com. Thanks for watching.